This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Get ready for a teaching that feeds your spirit and your mind, where the Word is the anchor in uncertain times, and doctrine doesn't bend to culture. We keep it simple, but dive deep, revealing a truth that strengthens us, a love that emboldens, and a mission that touches the world. Let's join Rick Renner. Welcome to today's program. My name is Rick Renner, and I've been waiting for you because today we're going to return to our deep dive of the book of Jude, and I'm teaching from the RIV, and I'm so excited about where we're going to be going in today's program and in every program this week. But I want you to order the entire series, which is called The Book of Jude. My friends, this is amazing. And it comes with a wonderful study guide. And right now we're also offering you my book, which is called Fallen Angels, Giants, Monsters, and the World Before the Flood, How the Events of Noah's Ark and the Flood are Relevant to the End of the Age. And, of course, we're offering you the RIV. Have you ordered yours? I'm teaching from it this week. It is the study Bible for people of faith. And if you're a person of faith and you want to dive deep into the scriptures, you are going to love the RIV, which is the Renner Interpretive Version. The subtitle says, A Conceptual Interpretation of the Greek New Testament with Footnotes and Commentary. The footnotes are simply amazing. But please order yours, my friend. You can order all these things by giving us a call right now or by going online. And today only, we are giving you a copy of my book called How to Keep Your Head on Straight in a World Gone Crazy. The foreword is written by my friend John Bevere. It is one book per household. And if you'll call right now, we will get one of these in the mail to you. Or you can go online to get your free copy. But it's today only, and it's one book per household household. But before we get into the word today, I want to read one testimony to you that really blessed my heart. Listen to this. One person said, hello, brother Rick Renner. Thank you for sending me the video about your ministry when I became a partner. It's refreshing and exciting to know all the great things the Lord is doing through Renner Ministries. I'm extremely happy and grateful to be a part of all that is happening in the ministry. Thank you, Brother Rick, for every update and for all the pictures of the different ministry offices around the world. I pray we will stay partners until Jesus comes. I say amen, and I want to say thank you for being a partner. And if you're not already a partner, please pray about becoming a partner with our ministry and help us take the teaching of the Bible around the world to people that are crying out for it. But hey, reach for your Bible, and today I'm going to be teaching from the R.I.V. of the book of Jude. And today we're going to go to Jude and we're going to very quickly review verse 3. And when you come to Jude, verse 3, the King James Version says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Now, we covered this in last week's episodes, but today we're starting brand new for a new week. So I want to cover this very briefly again, and I want you to hear the RIV of this verse. Listen to this. Beloved, I call you that because it's the only word I know to express how deeply I love and cherish you. I fully intended to write to you about our mutually shared salvation, and I was really eager to write about this exciting subject, ready to engage all my abilities to dive deep into all the benefits that our salvation entails. But as I was about to get started, I found myself gripped with a sense of urgency and a deeply felt need to address another subject that came to my attention. Now, just let me say this to you. I told you in a previous program that it seems Jude read 2 Peter. And when 2 Peter was passed into his hands and he read what Peter wrote about false teachers and false prophets worming their way into the church, he was so alarmed by what he read that he decided to scrap his plans to write a letter about salvation and to address the 
problem of errant leaders inside the church, and that's what this is referring to. So it says, I found myself gripped with a sense of urgency and a deeply felt need to address another subject that came to my attention. I felt someone needed to come alongside the troops to urge them to hold their head high, throw their shoulders back, and if necessary, look the enemy eyeball to eyeball and to earnestly contend for the faith. And my friends, here we are again at the end of the age when we need good, solid Christian leaders to tell the saints it's time for us to fight for the faith because people are trying to change the faith. They're trying to modify it to make it say what they want it to say. And this verse goes on to say, because it is under assault. The faith is under assault. God entrusted the faith to us once and for all and expects us to guard it and maintain its integrity in the same form it was delivered to us. God has given us the responsibility to impart it to others in the same form it was given to us. That is the RIV of verse three, and that is just amazing. And my friends, this is the reason why I am so committed to teaching the Bible, not just verse by verse, but word by word, there is power in the word of God. That's why I end every one of my programs by quoting Ecclesiastes 8, 4, where the word of a king is, there is power. I really believe every word in the Bible has power. And my friends, we're not to alter it. We're not to change it. It's okay to interpret it. It's okay to dive deep to understand it more fully, but we do not have the right to modify the grace of God. And that's what we read about in verse 4. And when you come to verse 4, James continues, and in the King James Version, he says, For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I want you to hear how the RIV translates this. And in the RIV, it begins by saying, Unfortunately, we are now confronted with a certain category of individuals who have craftily, clandestinely, as in a stealth operation, wormed their way right into the middle of our ranks. Does that sound pertinent to our times? But let me show you why I interpreted it in this way. Listen to footnote 22. And footnote 22 says, The phrase craftily, clandestinely, as in a stealth operation, wormed their way right into the middle of our ranks, is interpreted from a form of the word Paris duo, which is a triple compound of the words para, ice, and duno. The preposition para means alongside, the word ice means into, and the word duno means to enter and settle down into a place. But as a compound word, it pictures those who clandestinely enter a certain place and settle down and function right alongside others. It, don't, it denotes covert activity. And Jude was calling to mind Peter's commentary of these individuals, where in 2 Peter 2.1, Peter used a form of the word parisago. Oh, this is really important. And he used this word parisago to describe the covert activities of this type of group. In 2 Peter 2, 1, the word parisago is a triple compound which for, was formed from the words para, ice, and ago. The preposition para means alongside, the word ice means into, and the word ago means I lead. The word para indicates false teachers were attempting to walk alongside other believers. The word ice means they were trying to bring their false doctrine right into the church. And the word ago suggests these were individuals who held positions of leadership in the church. Both the words Paris duo and the word Paris ago give the impression of those who covertly make their way into the ranks and use a disguise or stealth to conceal their activities. Now that is amazing. All of that is in this Greek word, and that is why the RIV translates it. Unfortunately, we're now confronted with a certain category of individuals who have craftily, clandestinely, as in a stealth operation, wormed their way right into the middle of our ranks. But then the King James Version goes on to say, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation? 
The RIV says, long ago, it was foretold and written in advance. Long ago, as we read in footnote number 23, is an interpretation of the Greek word palai, which means long ago or of old, in times past or in former times. And listen, the use of this word tells us the Holy Spirit has been warning people for ages about this end time occurrence. If we have ears to hear, God is speaking to us, and he's been warning about this for generations. And that's why I translated here, long ago it was foretold and written in advance. And when the RIV says foretold and written in advance, footnote 24 says, the words foretold and written in advance in Greek are translated from a form of the word prographo, which is a compound of the word pro and grapho. The preposition pro means before or in advance, and the word grapho means I write. But as a compound, it depicts something that's been clearly foretold and written in advance, and it depicts an advanced written warning. So God prophetically has been speaking for generations that these events would occur in the very end of the age. But the King James Version goes on to say, for there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. What in the world does that mean? Well, the RIV says it differently. The RIV says... It was foretold and written in advance that a day would come when such individuals would show up. But in the end, heaven's court, listen to this, heaven's court will issue a damning verdict of judgment and condemnation on them due to their activities. That's the RIV of Jude 4. And footnote 25 says... The words, a damning verdict of judgment and condemnation, are translated from a form of the word crima, a Greek word that depicts a judicial verdict of judgment. Here we're forewarned that God, listen to this, we're forewarned that God will investigate the activities of those who use spiritual influence incorrectly and that heaven's court will pass a damning verdict upon such individuals as those described in these verses. The judge of the earth has been watching all along and has carefully observed this category of errant leaders. In the end, heaven's court will issue a severe final verdict of judgment against them. Now, friends, I'm going to tell you, this is enough to make one shake in his boots. It is very serious what we do with the Word of God. And when you begin to change the Word of God and make it say what you want it to say rather than what it really says, you better be prepared. Heaven is watching. And when you twist the Scripture, God in His heavenly court is going to issue a verdict of damnation against you. That's clearly what the Scripture says. And then the King James Version calls them ungodly men. What in the world does that mean? Well, the RIV says, I'm talking about people who were once reverent and God-fearing, but now they've obviously lost their fear of God. King James calls it ungodly men, but the RIV expands it, and footnote 26 explains why. Footnote 26 says, the words once reverent and God-fearing, but now have obviously lost their fear of God, are interpreted from a form of the word asebes, which means that which was once holy has become unholy. What was once reverent has become irreverent. And what was once God-fearing has lost its fear of God. It can be translated irreverent or disrespectful and depicts those who've lost the fear of God and those whose deeds are unholy, unsacred, and impure, and whose activities are unsanctioned by God. So somewhere along the way, these errant leaders have lost their fear of God. Once they had a fear of God, but now they've lost it. The King James Version calls them ungodly men. But again, the RIV says, I'm talking about people who were once reverent and God-fearing, but now have obviously lost their fear of God. And then the King James Version goes on to say, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. What does that word turning mean? Well, the RIV says, these are individuals who go about altering, changing, and modifying 
the grace of our God. Why do I translate it altering, changing, and modifying? Well, it is explained in footnote 27, which says the words altering, changing, and modifying are from a form of metatithemy, which is a compound of the word meta-antithemy. In this word, the preposition meta denotes a change. Antithemy means to place or to position. But in this verse, this word pictures an alteration, a change, or a modification of a position or a truth. And in addition to the concept of change, writers also employed the word meta, to convey the ideas of advancing past something. These concepts spill over into English with the words such as metaphysics, which means beyond the scope of natural physics. Thus, Jude was speaking here of those who were changing their position on truth, but he was further emphasizing that they had gone beyond truth and they had ventured into error as they were also elevating themselves above other regular believers. My friends, we are never to go beyond scriptures. We're to stick with the scriptures. But these individuals were altering, changing, and modifying the grace of our God. And the King James Version says, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. The RIV says, turning the grace of God into a teaching that says everything is okay and that leads to sinful living, especially marked by immoral and indecent sexual activities, along with other base behaviors. The word lasciviousness here is translated like this. And the reason I interpret it like this is explained in footnote number 28. Listen to this. Ay, yay, yay, this is amazing. The words sinful living, especially marked by immoral and indecent sexual activities, along with other base behaviors, are an interpretation of a form of the Greek word aselgeia. The word aselgeia describes excesses of all kinds, but notably pictures a life out of control. It describes wild, undisciplined living, especially marked by all types of unbridled sexual activity, but is also used to describe the excessive consumption of food or excessive overeating. It is often translated as the word greed because it depicts a desire for more and more that is never satisfied. That is the word which he uses here. And here we interpret it, the grace of our God into a teaching that says everything is okay and that this teaching leads to sinful living, especially marked by immoral and indecent sexual activities along with other base behaviors. But... It goes on to say, denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. But let's look at that word Lord, because the word Lord here is very, very important. The RIV says they can't claim ignorance about what they're doing because the Lord God, that is our Lord Jesus Christ, has spoken to them and warned them to get back in line. Now, why in the world do I interpret it like that? Well, that is explained in footnote number 29 which says the word Lord is a translation of the word despotes, which is an administrative term that usually refers to one who is like a chief executive officer or one with authority over others in the executive department directly under his control. It was furthermore used as a technical word to describe the chief steward of a large household who had authority over all the other servants in the household. Those under such a Lord reported to him, received instructions from him, were paid by him, and if the need arose, they were dismissed by him. And by using this word, Jude was describing those who'd been called by Christ into leadership positions in the church, those who relate to Jesus not only as their Savior, but also as the chief executive officer who called them. But in this case, although they're answerable to the Lord, they are denying His explicit directions. These leaders are genuinely called ministers who knowingly divert from the authority and instruction of the Lord who is over them. All of that is in the RIV. And it continues to say, they can't claim ignorance about what they're doing because the Lord God, that is our Lord Jesus Christ, has spoken to them and warned them to get back into line. But in spite of these warnings issued by the Lord, they knowingly are denying and walking away from His authoritative covering. 
My friends, all of that is Jude verse 4. And in the next program, we're going to move on to verse 5, which is amazing. But do you see that when you really take a deep dive into these Greek words and pull all the nuances and the flavor into the verse, it is amazing what is in these verses. And the book of Jude, which is ignored by so many people because it's small, is a very important epistle for us to study. And that's why we're studying it this week. But hey, I'll be back in just a moment. Someone asked the question, who does God choose for ministry? Well, most people think that with God, it's a lottery, that all these names are put in a bag and God shakes it up, sticks his hand in, pulls out a name and randomly says, I guess this is the one that I'll use. But my friends, that is not the way God chooses people for anything. And in fact, if you look at the behavior of God in the Bible, God is very predictable at how he chooses or does not choose people. God's choice is always made on observation. He's watching me and he's watching you to see how faithful we are with the assignment that we have right now. If we're not being faithful with what we're already doing, why would he tap us on the shoulder for another job? But when God finds someone that is faithful, that's the one that God knows he can trust for another assignment. So if you want God to choose you, you need to know he's observing you right now. So be faithful where you are and that will qualify you for the next assignment. The book of Jude is one of the most ignored books of the New Testament, yet it is filled with vital information for these late hours of the age. In this brand new 20 part series, Rick Renner dives deep into every word in the book of Jude. Verse by verse, hidden treasures in the Greek language are interpreted in the RIV with footnotes and commentary, so you can explore this rich and powerful epistle. In this series, Rick will share with you a broader interpretation of the text that will set you on fire, what it means to earnestly contend for the faith, how to build up your most holy faith, a description on the keeping power of Jesus Christ. This in-depth 20-part series is available in digital or physical format starting at just $35. And right now, the Renner interpretive version of James and Jude is available to pre-order for just $30. This is the first volume in Rick's New Testament series that you will devour once you get your hands on it. We are also offering you Rick's book, Fallen Angels, Giants, Monsters, and the World Before the Flood, a book designed to prepare you for the last days ahead. Since you're living in the end of the age, you need to know what the scriptures say about what will happen between now and Jesus' return. You can have this information-packed book for just $29. Don't miss this special offer. Bundle the 20-part series, The Book of Jude, and the books, The RIV, and Fallen Angels, Giants, Monsters, and the World Before the Flood. Call the number on your screen or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Hey friends, this is Rick Renner and today I'm in the Tulsa office and that's pretty exciting because I don't get to be in this office very often because as you know, Denise and I and our family, well, we live in Moscow, Russia. But right now I'm in Tulsa and it is such a delight to walk around this fabulous facility which you helped us purchase. And I wanna say thank you for everything that you have done. This is the room where we send out thank you letters to you for all your giving. This is the room where we duplicate a lot of our materials. And from this facility, I just wish you could see how many resources are being sent to the very ends of the planet. And I wanna say thank you because we only are able to do this, first of all, because of God's grace and God's anointing. And of course, Denise and I and our team, we're working real hard, but you're the ones that put the fuel in the tank that make this really happen. And for this, I wanna say thank you. And right now, I'm asking you to continue to help us with our ministry expansion project, which is paying off this facility. And guess what? We've already paid off more than one half of the debt. And not just this, but we finished the new studio in Moscow. So we are well on the way to finishing the ministry expansion project. Thank you for helping us. And if you've not helped us yet, please join us and help us to really knock it out of the park because we want to finish this so we can stop talking about it to the glory of God and because we want to use these resources to take the teaching of the Bible to the very ends of the earth. And I wanna say thank you for being a part of this monumental 
gospel work. Well, today we have really covered a lot of material, and I don't believe you can remember it all. So I want you to order the entire series, which is called The Book of Jude, and it comes with a study guide. And we're offering you my book, which is called Fallen Angels, Giants, Monsters, and the World Before the Flood. And we're offering you the RIV of James and Jude. I'm teaching from it on the program right now. It is a study Bible for people of faith. And if you love the Word of God, you will love the RIV, the volume of James and Jude. But you can order all these things by going online right now, or you can just call the number that is on the screen. And when you reach out to us, let us know how to pray for you. And Father, we thank you for the wonderful Word of God. Help us to be faithful to maintain it. Lord, that we would maintain the integrity and the power of it. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, I'll see you in the next program. But until then, remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there is power. Perhaps I have to do another test. The only thing to do is to wait. I wish things have gone another way. I want to be healthy. If there is no one to support you, don't give up. Just contact us choosing your available way. We're waiting for your call, willing to give you prayer support. Two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask. It shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. If you've never received Jesus as your Savior and Lord, now is the time for you to experience a new life Jesus has to give you. Pray this prayer with me right now. Lord, I repent of my sin and receive you as my Savior and Lord. Wash away my sin and make me completely new. I thank you that my sin is removed and Satan no longer has any right to lay claim on me. I faithfully promise that I will serve you as my Lord for the rest of my life. Amen. If you just prayed the prayer of salvation with us, would you please let us know by going to renner.org forward slash salvation? We would love to connect with you. Renner Ministries is proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ through every available media avenue to the uttermost parts of the earth. Discover the many ways you can help us make a difference in lives around the world with the word of God. We invite you to partner with us in teaching, strengthening, and rescuing lives for the glory of God. Together, we can make a difference that will last throughout eternity. This program was made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Please like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends so more people can see it.